Okay. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate the fact that I can be here tonight and share some thoughts with you guys. First and foremost, I hope you can excuse my English. It's not the best, but I will try to do my best to make myself heard. Is the sound okay, guys? Yeah. Okay, let's hit it. My plan was to come here today to speak about a topic that I've been working on the last 10 years. It's called how to maintain flow. I was so pepped, so stoked, and so happy, you know? And then one week ago, life just occurred and shit changed. And I think intelligence is measured by how you can adapt to changes. And today I have to adapt because last week something happened in my life that changed the topic here today. My grandfather died. So I today Two hours ago, landed from a 30-hour journey from Bangladesh. And today I want to dedicate this speech to honor my grandfather. And I want to speak about value-based leadership, because I think that's very important. And I speak to you here today as leaders, because I believe that most of you guys in the audience here today will lead in one way or another. So then one question occurs, how will you lead? So the journey begins in Bangladesh with my father. He was the first born. He had 10 siblings, he was pretty poor, had a rough life. But some way or somehow he managed to get a scholarship. He finished his education and he wanted to apply for higher education. Maybe you guys think that you are cool studying here, huh? Wow, I got in, but I can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> the competition is high. I don't know, 5,000, 10,000 people apply, 40, 100 people get attended. The Dhaka University in Bangladesh, it was 400,000 people that applied. 20 people got attended. That says something about the competition in the world, huh? My father was one of those. He studied national economy at Dhaka University, and finally he searched for higher education. He got attended at Uppsala University, and he came to Sweden. He finished off his education, and he applied for a job. They said no. He said, okay, try it again. They said no, cannot. He didn't understand what was wrong. He thought it was something wrong with him. But after 200 applications, he understood maybe there was something wrong with them. Not being able to see the qualities within me. And that made me sad as a young person. That made me disappointed at society, at people. And I felt angry, guys. Some way or somehow, I had luck in life. I grew up in a suburb called Nushbor, right in the end of the red line. Those who know, they know. It was a struggle in many ways. You got to respect the struggle. I had luck because I had the opportunity to engage myself in a project at this place called Free Suset. And there, I learned my first lesson about leadership. The first lesson, according to me, when it comes to leadership, it's about leading yourself. If you don't know who you are, it's hard to know where to go. And uh, I kind of set my first rules there. I decided to be the best I can be and do the best I can in every moment. And that gave me a bit of a push. It's always a piece of luck mixed in with between. But the first lesson here today is to be able to lead yourself. It's like flying an airplane, you know. I thought about it today when I came here. First you help yourself, then you help the children. 
And what you need to do to be able to feel safe, secure, whatever feelings you need in your body to be able to push the things you want to push forward, that's up to you. But you need to really focus on yourself first and foremost. And you know, I kind of pushed my way through and I had still some anger within because of my father's struggle and he didn't get the opportunity to prove himself worthy. So I felt that I had to show the world that our family and our legacy is worth to be out there, to be heard. And I had a fantastic mentor. This guy, his name was Anders Karlberg. He was the founder of Free Suicide. I really recommend all of you to read his book. And he had a fantastic ability to lead other people. And I think that's the next step in leadership. When you're done with yourself and you feel comfortable, then you're going to build a team, huh? You're going to manage to put people together, focusing on the right stuff, doing the right things. And he had that. And what I've learned from him that I want to share with you guys is that I believe that a good leader has one job, and that's to see and lift up other people. That's the one thing a good leader does. Recognize strength, understand weaknesses, and makes the puzzle work. And he had that. I didn't understand how he could do it. He made, he made like bank robbery, robbers and, and, and CEOs come together to figure out how we should make the society work. And I was like, how, how can you put together these people in one room? But he did it because he had courage. And I was really, really inspired by that. And I tried to follow him as much as I could. I was everywhere where he went. And I, I just wanted to, to learn from him and understand how, how he could see the things he saw, you know. He was seeing it from a different angle. And it's true what they say, you know, here's your comfort zone and there's where the magic happens. And to be able to step out of your comfort zone and enter a different world and understand that, I also think that that's something a good leader needs to have in his back pocket or her back pocket. At Free Sources, I was working, I was working there for like five, six years. I grew in my knowledge. I followed people. I got inspired by others. And I fast forward a bit. I don't know if you remember about eight, nine years ago, there was a big question in Sweden. It was election time. The Sverige Demokraterna, the Swedish Democrats, they attended in the election. Are they going to enter the parliament? Are they not going to enter the parliament? If they enter the parliament, what is going to happen? That was a big question, you know? And I was working as a news journalist at Swedish Radio at that time. And I was trying to interview people to understand what is the pros, what is the cons, what is the good things, what is the bad things. And no one had good answers. And they got elected and they got attended into the into the parliament. And that made me focused on the third step of leadership. And that was to lead with diversity. And that's a bit of a cliche today, but I strongly and truly believe that the more tolerant we are, towards people's different behaviors, the better it gets. Uh, the more tolerant we are among, towards people's different behaviors, the more dynamic we can get into our organization, groups, whatever things we want to push forward. And what I've seen in my work I've been working with Spotify, OBB, SPBOB, big global companies. It's that they have really understood this. The fact that the more tolerant we are towards people's different behavior, the more dynamic we get, 
And the more dynamic we get, the more we encourage creativity. And when people feel comfortable, when people feel that they can be the way they want to be in a group, they get creative. And when people get creative, it gives birth to innovation. Innovation is one thought meeting another thought, and that shit comes together and forms a third thought. And I really miss this a lot in Sweden, especially in groups like this. People tend to think the same way. Everybody knows what's right, huh? Everybody knows what's wrong. Of course, huh? Or how often do you push yourself? How often do you step out of your comfort zone, do something that makes you afraid? How often do you push your boundaries? I don't see that that much, unfortunately. But I really, really want to make a push for that. And now things were going well, you know. I started off my company. I was working with a lot of other companies, business to business, trying to make stuff work. And, uh, you know, when you're on a ride, you tend to forget what's really important in life, you know. And you start to think about money, but things that maybe is not that valuable when life occurs. And life occurred in my life. I bought my father a house. I fixed all of that. And then one day, he came home, you know, and he told me, Leo, sit down. It's okay. <laughs> I want to tell you something. What? I got cancer. What? Yeah, leukemia. I think I'm going to die. The first thing that struck my mind was, okay, where can I buy what? What do you need? I'm going to buy it. So said, you can't buy this for money. You cannot buy health for money sometimes. And I understood that shit. I'm going to lose you. And then I sat down and asked my father a question. What is your dream, man? And <laughs> he told me a story. It's like, Leo, when I was six years old, I was picking rice on a rice field in Bangladesh, you know. Didn't have anything. But your grandfather, together with some other people, they saw my talent and they financed me and they made me and they pushed me into school. And I had the opportunity to start studying. Without that push, I would never been able to take myself this far. So I want to give back to my community before I die. Strong shit, huh? So I told him, okay. Let's do this. And now to the fourth step of leading and leadership. To lead globally. I believe that most of you guys here in the audience today will take that position in one way or another. And when you're entering Champions League, there's only one thing that matters. And that's to make me care. And maybe it sounds like a cliche, but I'm so today 100% confident that what you need to do with yourself to be able to take these positions as a leader is to find your cause. What is your cause? Why are you here? You have to turn yourself inwards and really deeply try to answer these questions without lying to yourself. I'm really happy that I engaged myself in my father's dream and building up this orphanage that turned out to this huge organization in my father's village that now today <laughs> engage a lot of people in a lot of good stuff. And I'm really proud that my grandfather could see this before he passed away. And today I've come to the conclusion that is three things that matters that I really want to share with you here today as a friend. The first thing that you need to care about is personal health. As I told you in the beginning, 
First you help yourself, then you help the children. If you're not okay, if you're not fit mentally, physically, you will not be able to push the way you need to push to make something really, really change. The second thing I've realized it's that the only thing that matters is good relations. And I've misinterpreted that for a long time. I, I thought good relations meant that we thought the same, or you know, we had the same opinions, and we liked each other, and we had the same hobbies, or whatever. That's not a good relation. A good relation is built upon trust. Can I trust you? Yeah, or no? If I can't, then it's nothing to have. And can you trust the people around you? And how trustworthy are you? I see people, they change opinion, they go into one room, they have one opinion, they go into the second room, they have a second opinion, they go home, they have a third opinion. Come on, guys. Where's the fucking integrity? What do you stand for? And the third thing that I've really realized is that you do not have to do anything. Try to change that. You know, sometimes you feel like, I must do this. I just, I just must do that. I just have to do this. I just have to. Fuck that shit. Focus on what you want to do, not what you have to do. That makes the whole difference. And maybe it sounds like, <laughs> it sounds crazy, but I really, really want to encourage all of you here in the room today to put some focus on what type of video you want to be. What type of things you want to change in the world. Why do I tell you this today? It was the last time I was here, standing here at the same auditorium, exactly here. I think there was a bunch of other people from the business sector in Sweden. And I asked the people in the audience, I want, how many people of you wanted to go good for Sweden? Want Sweden to go forward? Everybody raised their hands. And then the next question was, how many of you in the room know what you will do to make that happen? No one raised their hand. <laughs> and I found that quite amusing. So I think you have a responsibility, all of you guys, to figure this shit out. And the best way to do it is together with each other. And to be able to do that, you really need to accept each other for the way we are. And don't be that judgmental towards other people because you don't know. You've got to be careful by judging because you can really hurt people and you can really make people angry. And today we have enough anger in the world, so you need to spread the love. My cause in life is just to make people happy. Simple as that. As long as I make people happy, I'm happy. And when I was younger, I asked my grandfather always, Dada, Dada, what, what should I do to become successful? I want to be successful. And he always had this beautiful answer. He said, Leo, if you want to be successful, there's only one way, and that's to make other people happy. And today, I've realized the greatness of these words. And forgive and forget. Live and laugh. Keep it simple and have fun. I mean, just like that. So hopefully all, all of you here today can now, together with me, give my grandfather a silent minute. And I want all of you here in the audience to close your eyes and give yourself a minute to focus on what type of leader you want to be. Okay, can you do this for me? I would really appreciate that. So let's pray.
Maybe some of you found answers. Maybe some of you found questions. I don't know. But whatever you're finding when you're searching within, try to seek. And don't be afraid because it will lead you places you could never imagine. So with that said, I just want to reach out to you. Dada to Michinta Corona, Amiase. And if I become half the man that he is or was, I will be proud. And to all of you here in the audience, from the bottom of my heart, I really wish you the best of luck to take over the world and lead it with good values. So focus on value-based leadership. Thank you so much for letting me have you. Thank you.